Okay, uh, thank you for that kind introduction and thanks to Raphael for a, for a very interesting talk. And thank you to all of you for coming here on such a beautiful day. Um, so it's an honor for me to speak about my work with Robin and um, Robin's colleagues at Imperial on psychedelics and ego dissolution. We've had a nice introduction to that and actually many of the talks that we've had over the last two days have touched upon this experience. Um, so what I hope to do in the short time I have is to briefly touch upon what we mean by self or ego. As Raphael mentioned, these are not easy to define terms, and this is a significant impediment to any scientific study of these concepts. Then I want to convince you that it's worthwhile to study distortions of self-experience, not just because we're interested in psychedelics, but because we're interested in human consciousness and human suffering as well. And that finally, um, Psychedelics do offer a useful window into studying this most mysterious of human experiences. And then I want to present some data that I've collected with Robin and Lisa and other colleagues at Imperial, uh, a very large data set looking at ego dissolution and psychedelics in, in a different way to the way that Raphael did, but very complementary. Um, so what I'm not going to talk about are any of the neuronal correlates of ego dissolution or self-experience, and I'm not going to talk about the fine-grained philosophical debates which go on uh, in the topic of self and self-experience. Not because I believe these topics are not interesting. I believe they're profoundly interesting. There's just not enough time to do it. So first of all, the concept of self. Well, the nature of self-experience is perhaps the central question in philosophy. It's it's a puzzled man for millennia. Despite the ease with which we use words like me or I, the nature of self continues to defy a simple, straightforward definition. Philosophers and cognitive scientists make multiple distinctions. Uh, they view self as a constellation construct. There is more than one way to view self. Um, in the psychoanalytic or depth psychology tradition, again, the ego or self as a highly intricate structure with roots descending down into the personal and into the collective unconscious. And more recently in neuroscience, attention has turned to a region of brain areas which show high activity at rest and appear to be associated with self-related processing. So autobiographical memory, introspection, mental time travel, the so-called default mode network, which we believe is a neuronal correlate of at least one type of self-experience. But I guess in many ways, Unluckily or luckily, when self is disordered, um, it doesn't appear to respect these fine-grained distinctions. So we have to be a bit more pragmatic with our definition of self or ego when confronting the topic of ego dissolution. And in this, in this talk, I'd like to use the term ego in a kind of vernacular sense. We mean the person behind the eyes, the subjective experience. Every self is extended in space and time, we have a past, a present, and a future. We partake in a social world, we're embodied. So these are a very broad view of what we mean by self. So why study self-disturbance at all? Um, why is it important? Well, to put it bluntly, it's disturbances of self-experience are among the most profound that any human being can have. In the realm of psychiatry, we often encounter self-disturbances in a very anxiety-provoking or distressing setting. Some patients with severe mental illnesses report feeling so estranged from themselves, from their thoughts, from their actions, that uh, they experience very painful feelings of depersonalization, almost passivity phenomena. In the psychotic context, they may report other people or other agencies controlling them and their thoughts. But on the other end of the spectrum, self-disturbances and ego dissolution are perhaps the what is a central component of the mystical experience, which we've heard so much about already. The feeling of being one with the universe and encountering infinity and maybe the divine. And I can't possibly do justice to this experience uh, in the short time we have. And Bill Richards yesterday spent a good half an hour describing it in the most beautiful way uh, that I have heard. So I'm not even going to try and replicate that. And I guess in our context, we can't help but draw parallels between the mystical experience and the psychedelic peak experience. When people report a disintegration of their normally well-circumscribed sense of self, 
and a feeling of union with the universe and the divine. And much of that is captured uh, within the psychedelic artwork that many of you will be familiar with. So if we want a, a trip report of ego dissolution under a psychoactive substance, uh, I think we can do no better than William James. Uh, he wrote many things better than anyone else, and he loved nitrous oxide. It's not a classical psychedelic, but it has psychedelic properties. Uh, it's a dissociative anesthetic, and he wrote that uh, on inhaling nitrous, the ego and its objects are one. Every opposition among whatsoever things vanishes in a higher unity. I guess Raphael is right, there is no formal definition of ego dissolution, but we can look to the people of great experience in the past for our definitions, and Stan Groff wrote that ego death was an ecstatic state characterized by loss of boundaries between the subject and the objective world, with ensuing feelings of unity with people, nature, and the entire universe. Um, so there's this idea that what usually maintains our sense of self is a boundary which we maintain cognitive, cognitively, psychologically, separating all that is me from all that is not me. And when that ego boundary is compromised, we can't help but feel a simultaneous disintegration of our sense of self, but also a feeling of ensuing unity with whatever else is around us. And that could either be painful or uh, ecstatic. So I guess what, what I've what I hope to have demonstrated or argued is that there is an experience, namely ego dissolution, which has certain properties which, uh, which are found in common uh, time and time again with certain psychoactive substances, and that this experience may inform our discussions of, of self more generally. So in the time I've got left, I just want to introduce you to the data that we collected at Imperial. Um, much of this work was done with a very talented master's student called Lisa. I'm not sure if she's here. And um, hey, Lisa. <laughs> and and uh, Robin at the back. Um, and um, so this is really a, cl a collaborative effort. So what we wanted to do was to answer two questions. The first was we wanted to examine the relationship between ego dissolution and psychedelics in a statistically robust fashion. We wanted to demonstrate beyond doubt that these, sub these experiences, which we know anecdotally exist, do indeed exist with psychedelics and not with other common drugs. And secondly, we wanted to validate a questionnaire measure which would capture this experience uh, and validate it in a psychometrically robust fashion. And I hope you can see that only when you have both of these things met can you actually do a science of ego dissolution. You have to demonstrate that the construct exists and that it is specific to what you want to study, and you have to demonstrate that you can measure it. And only then can you do, do a science of ego dissolution. We chose an internet questionnaire. Um, where subjects answered 16 questions on their ego consciousness uh, when experiencing, uh, when under the influence of a psychedelic drug. They also answered questions for alcohol and cocaine because if we found a relationship between ego dissolution and psychedelics, we needed to know that this was specific for that particular subclass and not, say, just relevant or applicable to any psychoactive substance. Only eight of the questions we asked actually tapped into ego dissolution. The other eight tapped into some other distortion of ego consciousness, this idea of increased self-confidence or self-assuredness. And the reason for doing that is because we need to know that people aren't just going to endorse any item of abnormal experience when under psychedelics. We need to know that there is some specificity to this. Um, largely, thanks to Lisa, we got a huge number of subjects who answered the questionnaire. We got nearly 2,000 trip reports. Um, and the questions, if you're interested, well, you should be interested, are here. The items in blue are, um, are the ego dissolution questions. As you can see, they all relate to one or, one or the other facet of um, the ego dissolution experience as described in the psychedelic literature. The items in grey do not relate to this experience. So what I need to do is to convince you and convince the scientific community that these blue items do indeed capture something called ego dissolution. I can't just tell you they do. Now, and if they do, then you would expect that when a subject endorses one of the items, they would also endorse the other seven. So the scores on these items should be highly correlated with each other and not correlated with the gray items. And without going into too much detail, I'm here afterwards to talk, there are validated and hypothesis-free ways you can test this um, in the psychometric literature. One of them is called a factor analysis. And to cut a long story short, these blue items do indeed load onto a single factor. 
i.e. they're highly correlated and they measure the same thing. And they're not correlated with the other items which um, we can see measure something slightly different. I felt especially self-confident or especially self-assured. Um, so for those interested, here are the factor loadings. Um, and uh, we can talk about them afterwards in personally if necessary. So these eight items in blue represent an eight item scale, which is highly consistent, has a one factor structure, um, and captures something. So what is that something? Well, I think I would argue this is the sense of ego dissolution. And when we, when we correlate it with, say, the unit of experience is experienced um, in the mystical context, it's very, very highly correlated. So I agree with Raphael, ego dissolution can be experienced as positive or negatively valenced. It so happens that when people endorse items of ego dissolution in a questionnaire like this, in the context of an internet survey where they volunteer their reports, they seem to be talking about the unitive experience which has certain mystical qualities. Um, so what's the relationship between ego dissolution and psychedelics? This is the, the really the key result. We have a dose response relationship, it appears. So the LSD equivalent dose taken correlates with the blue line which is the degree of ego dissolution experienced. And importantly, uh, this does not correlate with any old altered state of self-experience, such as increased self-confidence, which is the red line. The other thing to note is that you need quite a high dose to get a decent amount of ego dissolution. So this is something to bear in mind for future studies. Um, importantly, the opposite relationship is seen with cocaine, and no relationship at all is seen with alcohol. So we have here a measure which we can argue to various ethics committees and funders that we have a substance, namely the classical psychedelic class, which can perturb ego consciousness in one direction, in a reproducible manner, in a statistically specific manner. And when we test this in another way by asking subjects, what is the actual intensity of the experience that you had, not the dose? So it's a different way of measuring the same thing. We find exactly the same result. And these results are highly significant. The association between the intensity of the psychedelic experience and ego dissolution is uh, leaps and bounds stronger than between anything else. I think that when anyone, whenever anyone takes a, a psychoactive substance, they're probably going to feel a little bit good about themselves so, um, and have some altered states of self-experience, but there's no difference between alcohol and cocaine here. And I think the final thing I want to, to say is that we did do some exploratory analysis and say, we asked subjects how much ego dissolution they experienced in their most intense ever psychedelic trip. So I guess the peak of the peak experience in their lives. Um, and we saw what this correlated with. And uh, obviously the subjects didn't know this was a hypothesis we were testing. So the first thing it correlated with was the increase in well-being that the trip gave them. And most of these subjects were reporting trips that happened between one and five years ago. So one take home message is, the degree of ego dissolution you experience under a psychedelic does seem to correlate with some sense of well-being, even perhaps if at the time it is not entirely pleasurable. The other things that it correlated with were uh, anti-authoritarian political views, liberal or left-wing political views, the connectedness to nature and openness, the personality trait of openness. These are the results from five multivariate linear regressions. Um, the ego dissolution line at the bottom uh, is significant, the associations are significant over and above or after accounting for the age, the sex, and the educational background of the subjects. So these, this is not a causal relationship. This is a, a cross-sectional study. We have a correlation here. But they are certainly interesting things for future studies to look at, especially when you consider that previous work has shown that mystical experiences correlate with the spiritual significance that subjects give to an experience year or months later the increase in well-being that subjects report increases in openness as well. And for me, perhaps most excitingly, as we've heard uh, in this conference, there are hints that this experience may also correlate with the therapeutic outcomes in clinical trials. And again, we can look to Stan Groff, who said, the main objective of psychedelic therapy is to create optimal conditions for the subject to experience ego death and the subsequent transcendence into the so-called peak psychedelic experience. Um, so thank you for listening. It's, um, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. Um, these are the conclusions which
It's such a short talk, I don't think you need reminding of. And the acknowledgements, um, as always, to Robin and Lisa for their, for their collaboration on this, to other members of Robin's group um, who have spoken to this conference, and also to close friends who have also uh, been very valuable in discussions on this topic. So I'd love to have uh, what, maybe a question or two. Thanks.